we should talk about it. It, of course, being the one hour, 54 minute, nine inning Major League Baseball game played between the Rays and Cardinals last week. A game reminiscent of a certain video about Mark Burley made by a certain handsome baseball YouTuber. As you can imagine, this game was a pitcher's duel between the Rays Shane McClanahan and the Cardinals Miles Michaelis, but there have been plenty of pitcher's duels this year, there have been plenty of low scoring games this year. What is it that makes this one the first game since 2019 to go less than two hours? So a big component here is pitch tempo, which is the amount of time on average spent between each pitch by each pitcher. And leading the way this year, the quickest working pitcher so far, with the bases empty at least, is Shane Bieber. 14.1 seconds on average between pitches versus 18.1 league average. Slowest pitcher with the bases empty this year is my dear friend Lucas Giolito. So Lucas, buddy, maybe pick up the pace a little bit. Getting into the leaderboard here, we have Miles Michaelis at 14th out of 149 pitchers on this leaderboard. He's between Michael Lorenzen and Nestor Cortez, but these names you see here, these guys work fast, particularly with the bases empty. You'll actually have to scroll down to number 75 for Shane McClanahan. So with the bases empty, he is relatively average compared to the rest of the starting pitchers in the league in terms of his pace. Actually, I shouldn't say average because the league average is 18 seconds and Shane's at 17. Part of that is relievers work slower and part of that is just generally the slower guys really kind of drag things down, but he's around the median for a starting pitcher. However, if you sort by the tempo with runners on base, Shane McClanahan is actually the second fastest. So generally, of course, you know, a pitcher's going to slow down with runners on base. They might have to make a pickoff move or two. They're just going to have more concentrating to do. But Shane McClanahan, not much of a slowdown with runners on base, which is quite impressive because all these other guys here like Manaya and Junis and Aaron Ashby, they're some of the fastest guys with the bases empty. Of course, base runners weren't much of an issue in this one to begin with there weren't very many. By the way, in my How to Fix MLB video, I actually advocated for an 18 second pitch clock with the bases empty. That was a fairly aggressive suggestion, but as you can see here, that would affect about one third of the starting pitchers in the league. They would have to greatly change uh, their pitching tempo because they average more than that. Obviously, if you look at pitchers in the 17 range, yeah, they have plenty of times where I'm sure they take 18 plus seconds, but they would just need to pick up the pace a little bit, whereas you know, some of these guys here at the bottom, Giolito, Burns, Luis Garcia, Otani, you know, they would really have to sort of change up their pace with a bases empty pitch clock, especially if it was 18 seconds. So we're hopping on here on Baseball Reference just to answer the question, hey, when were the most recent two-hour games? And as you can see here, at 1.14, that's 114 minutes. That was the game played last week between the Rays and the Cardinals. We also had a one-hour, 59-minute game in 2019 between the Marlins and the Mets. But in order to find one that was also an hour 54, you'd actually have to go back to 2015 for a matchup between the White Sox and the Blue Jays. Mark Burley was the losing pitcher in that game, pitching for the Blue Jays. But as you sort of scroll down here, you're going to see a lot of Chicago White Sox, 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 Chicago White Sox. You get the points. A lot of Mark Burley action. Because Mark Burley is, of course, the fastest working pitcher since 2010. Brent Suter is second with the bases empty. Burley also the fastest with runners on base, followed by Derek Lowe. He just worked at a hectic pace, and it was really fun to watch. So the most recent sub-two-hour game before last week was this 2019 matchup between the Mets and Marlins, and it's very similar, in fact, to the game that was just played between Michaelis and McClanahan. In this case, we have Syndergaard, we have Alcantara, and also Seth Lugo got in this game, but they all combined for 193 pitches and 58 batters faced. Whereas in the Rays-Cardinals game we're talking about from June 9th, 2022, they combined for 196 pitches and also 58 batters faced. Yet it was five minutes shorter, and, and pace does play a big part in that. Miles Michaelis was an absolute stud in this one, just ultra efficient. Obviously, we now know he works very quickly with the bases empty, but he took just 85 pitches to get through eight innings. And to get through the first three of those innings, he threw just 27 pitches. So he basically faced the entire Rays lineup 
with a total pitching time of 9 minutes and 35 seconds. He got through the entire Rays lineup, 9 minutes, 35 seconds. He was averaging a little over 3 minutes an inning, a little over 1 minute per batter. Like, that is crazy fast. And the thing is, both these pitchers can only affect the game time so much because there is just time baked in that they can't control. That time is, you know, how long does it take a batter to walk up to the plate and be introduced? How long does it take for the teams to switch sides? Commercials, obviously a very big one. So pitchers can really only control actual gameplay, and, and Michaelis and McClanahan both did a great job in this game. By the way, speaking of commercials, I think I spent more time watching MLB TV archive ads than I did actually recording Miles Michaelis footage for this video. Yeah, thanks a lot, MLB TV. It's really good to be inundated with ads with a product that I spent $140 this season for. Great job, really enjoyed it. So the most important play in this game by far was the two-run home run by G-Man Choi off of Michaelis, which gave the Rays the lead, and also, more importantly, gave the home team the lead, because when the home team wins, they don't have to bat in the bottom of the ninth. You effectively skip half an inning. Imagine if the Rays weren't winning, and the bottom of the ninth still had to be played. The game time would be at about an hour 54, then you'd have to add another minute and a half, two minutes for the next commercial break. And so whoever was pitching the ninth for the Cardinals would really only have about three minutes if they were hoping to keep the game under two hours, and I just don't think that would happen. Helsley and Gallegos, who are their main ninth inning guys, well, they're actually the slowest working pitchers on the Cardinals, both below average. I mean, Gallegos is just super slow, 27 seconds between pitches with the bases empty, 33 with runners on, so I just don't think there would be any hope in this game if the Rays didn't win it. So I guess what I'm really just trying to say here is that Miles Michaelis is the undoubted MVP of this game. I mean, Shane McClanahan did a great job. He went out there, he shoved. He's been the best pitcher in MLB so far this season, but Miles Michaelis was really the key to unlocking this sub two-hour game because of his 85 pitch efficiency, because of his willingness to lose in order to meet the goal of sub two hours. And I don't want to take anything away from McClanahan because he was really, really good in this game. And apart from a 20 pitch six Sixth inning, he was also quite efficient. He just kind of gave himself a hard time by making an error on an Albert Pujols ground out that, come on man, it's Albert Pujols, you gotta be able to get this out. He's not fast down first baseline. Michaelis had the efficiency in. McClanahan really played his part in this game in this role of the pitcher's duel. As you can see here, he leads MLB and Sierra by over half a run. Sierra's my ERA estimator of choice. He's the best in that stat by over half a run. Next best is Corbin Burns. I would argue at this point that Shane McClanahan has been the best pitcher in MLB so far. Here's the thing about the pursuit of the sub two hour baseball game, right? It takes two to tango. In this case, it was Michaelis McClanahan, but the cold hard truth is one good pitching performance alone will not get the job done. Looky here. Look at the 10 most recent perfect games in MLB history. Of course, the most recent, we know who did it. It was done by the King. Felix Hernandez, August 15th, 2012. That game length was 142 minutes. That is not sub two hour. That is two hours and 22 minutes, like not even close. And that was a one nothing ball game. 2010, Roy Halladay's perfect game. That was also a one to nothing game. And the total game duration was 2 hours and 13 minutes. So isn't that crazy? A one nothing game that featured a perfect game that's not sub 2 hours. The craziest though is probably the year before because that would be Mark Burley's perfect game versus the Tampa Bay Rays. Mark Burley's perfect game lasted 2 hours 3 minutes. Isn't that absolutely insane? Like not even a Mark Burley perfect game can guarantee sub 2 hours. The only real bit of slowness in this game was Jason Adams' ninth inning for the Rays. Uh, pace was not so much an issue at that point because he just really needed to save the game and confirm that there wouldn't be a bottom of the ninth inning to get things done, but it took him some time to close things out. It took him over eight minutes to face three batters, whereas, as I said with Miles Michael as previously, it took him about nine and a half minutes to face nine batters and get through the raise order for the very first time. Overall, I'd have to say it's good that a sub two hour MLB game is still possible. I was starting to have my doubts, quite frankly. I certainly would not want it to be the average duration of an MLB game, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind seeing the average time per nine innings drop well below three hours. This year, as you can see from this column right here where my mouse is, the average amount of time to get through nine innings is three hours, five minutes. That's actually an improvement in my mind over last year when it was three hours, ten minutes, but of course, 
historically games are getting longer and if we're willing to go back in time here to 1982 you can see it's two hours 35 minutes to get through nine innings which is actually half an hour shorter and here's the thing here's the thing baseball fans here's my impassioned plea to you right now I love baseball I just want to see baseball I don't want to see standing around and the difference between a two hour 35 minute you know average in 1982 and a three hour five minute average in 2022 it's the same amount of baseball you are there to see your team make 27 outs and win the game and that's it's the same amount of baseball no matter what look at this 1982 we were looking at 8.6 runs per game 8.6 8.6 runs per game, 76.5 plate appearances. In 2022, fast forward 40 years later, 8.66 runs per game, 75 plate appearances per game. It's the same amount of baseball, people. It's just, it's the, you're cutting down on the standing around, all right? I hate it when people are like, oh, I wish the games were longer. I wish the games were four or five hours because I love baseball so much. It's the same amount of baseball. It's the same amount of baseball. They're there to make 27 outs. And of course, the pitch clock is in use all over professional baseball, just not in MLB quite yet. Look at this tweet that just dropped from John Heyman. Games without pitch timers in minor league baseball are 2 hours 59 minutes. Games with the pitch clock, 2 hours 35. So they've cut about 24 minutes just with the pitch clock. And here's the thing, only .6 violations per game. So pitchers are adjusting to it. And look, three-hour games are one thing. I can handle a three-hour game. That's the average. But last year... There were 10 playoff games that went over four hours, and only one of them went to extra innings, but here you are. 10 playoff games over four hours. I think the worst offender of these is definitely the wild card game in the National League between the Dodgers and the Cardinals. I mean, it's just unbelievable to think about. This was a three to one ball game, not many runs scored, you know, 12 hits combined between both teams. Four hours, 15 minutes to get through nine innings. Four hours, 15 minutes. So that's the thing. If you think the pace of play is all right in the regular season, you can still be kind of annoyed by it in the postseason. Obviously, in the postseason, things are a little longer anyways because there's more commercials. But still, I think this is this is something I would like to see cut down in the future. By the way, in case you were wondering, you probably weren't wondering, uh, one hour, 54 minutes, That's shorter than most of the movies in theaters right now. That's shorter than Jurassic World, shorter than Top Gun, shorter than Doctor Strange, but it is longer than the Bob's Burger movie. So it is, you know, shorter than the majority of movies that you're probably going to go see in theaters right now. It is shorter than Downton Abbey, A New Era, but at the same time, it's also longer than Watcher. I don't don't know much about Watcher. Well, so there it is, the one hour, 54 minute MLB game in 2022. Congratulations to both Miles Michaelis and Shane McClanahan. Obviously, Shane McClanahan was the winning pitcher in this one, but I mean, Miles Michaelis, round of applause, beautiful effort. However, I will say to both of you, you're not going to catch Mark Burley. Mark Burley's record, 99 minutes, a 99 minute game between him and Ryan Franklin of the Seattle Mariners. So great effort, but I mean, come on now, 99 minutes, 